Hello again everyone, Edwin Leonard back once again. In this YouTube astrological segment, I'm going to be giving you my Scorpio March 2019 horoscope forecast part two of two. And yes, this does apply and pertain to the sun, moon, and ascendant anyway. First thing up is, as far as, uh, well, Mar Mars is going to be in Taurus, so the seventh house is what's going to be emphasized and highlighted. So at this time, there could be a lot of a persistent, obstinate, very stubborn battle, so to speak, confrontations, perhaps with open adversaries. It could be with legal opponents, even a grandmother. Um, it could be with a significant other. Those situations may be more contentious than usual. Uh, you might find yourself uh, becoming more angry at those people over more sustained provocation. Uh, it's possible at this time, too, if you're unattached at this time, Scorpio, where you might have a sexual liaison or interlude, with could be with a Taurus business partner, it could be a Taurus sun, moon, or ascendant, or simply one that embodies Taurus-like characteristics. Um, it could be with a significant, um, could be the significant, someone that could eventually be a significant other, I should say, a sustain a relationship, a marriage partner, eventually, perhaps. Um, it could be, too, uh, where you want, uh, it could be a lot of energy and vitality put into, um, into competition. It could be something Taurus-related, such as something that requires a lot of uh, endurance. It could be something like with long-distance running or working out um, vigorously, uh, something uh, that could be Taurus uh, related. And anyway, um, well, the next thing uh, I want to get to is, okay, well, Jupiter will be in Sagittarius. So the second house is what will be emphasized and highlighted. Now, at this time, as I've talked about previously, Jupiter could be rather paradoxical. It could be very strongly benign and benevolent, but it could also have a tendency to enlarge and expand. Now, in some cases, this may enlarge and expand rather foolhardy, uh, reckless, over-exuberant, optimistic behavior. It could be in connection with things of a monetary nature. So, if you're just uh, you're you're trying, if if you you know you don't necessarily want to be overly optimistic necessarily in trying to like if you're going to invest something and or, or or you feel like you can you know you can make all this money this get rich quick scheme remember that there's really no such thing as a get rich quick scheme so avoid being overly optimistic as far as that goes and a lot of that a lot of this could be predicated and dependent on aspects this makes the points in your natal chart say if this makes an adverse aspect to your venus uh, for example, uh, this could increase that propensity for being over optimistic in monetary uh, matters. And also, too, um, it could also be being over optimistic, over exuberant, even foolhardy in matters connected with your self worth and self esteem. It might be such, for example, as trying to do work out to, uh, with too heavy a weight. Uh, in order to build your body up to make yourself feel better about yourself. So just, you know, just try to be a little bit careful with the Sagittarius energy. Now, it could be very auspicious and fortuitous, though, for a Sagittarius uh, money-making endeavor. It could be something connected with sports or something with horses or, or publishing, even anything, advertising, anything that could be Sagittarius-related, uh, something with the law, perhaps. Now, also, too, this could be uh, manifest in having a lot of hope and optimism uh, in, in, in perhaps uh, religion and, and, and philosophy. And those are really, and, and perhaps even religion, especially in, in something that you can actually value strongly. And at the same time, this could also expand uh, tolerance among your possessions and things that you uh, may own you may put a lot of exuberance and enthusiasm in being uh, as far as being that perpetual learner incorrigible optimist and being the second house something that is what could be uh, valued so and also could be very lucky and fortunate for sports and outdoors as far as your self-worth uh, may go and how you're feeling about yourself the outdoors can often do that for you and sports and being doing exercising so anyway Next thing up, Saturn will still be in Capricorn, so the third house is what's going to be emphasized and highlighted. Now, at this time, well, um, 
there uh, can be a lot of restrictions, limitations, and matters with your communication. It could be with perhaps people you knew from your early education. Uh, you might find yourself uh, t taking care of perhaps a sibling, a cousin, a neighbor that might be debilitated or sickly. It could be something connected with the knees, the bones, or the joints that might be making you feel somewhat despondent and melancholy. Uh, it could also be I mean, there might be some limitations and restrictions regarding your short journeys uh, at this time, as well as far as your uh, local transportation uh, situations with that. I mean, this could also be about taking serious responsibility to your communications. It could be getting back in touch with things you learn from your early education that you may need to apply now. And anyway, another way this could manifest this could be about perhaps older uh people it could be capricorn sun moon or ascendant people or ones that embody capricorn like characteristics might figure more prominently in your communication your transportation local transportation at this time it could be assimilating information just your general learning and your uh and you know that could be one way it could actually manifest could also be about uh, I mean, third house I see is mobility. So, I mean, there could be mobility issues that might be Capricorn related. It could be something, I mean, mobility restrictions or limitations. It could be something uh, connected with the knees, the bones, or the joints. And it might be where you might have some, if you're a younger person, the few of you that may see this, that might be in like high school, for example, that say this, this might be a time where you might be feeling uh, something uh, from you know an authority position like your father for example that may be really uh, putting some really curtailing a lot of your uh, communications at this time in your short journeys you might be going through an extensive period or you're getting your car your keys taken away to your vehicle or being grounded extensively um, this could be I mean which might be somewhat prohibiting or limiting you in terms of your communications and what you're doing as far as going out visiting neighbors going out doing the as far as your neighborhood your neighbors go I should say and perhaps even your communications as well it could be like taking your iPhone phone away or something uh, or something of that nature so anyway next thing up Uranus will be in Aries as far as March goes from the first until the sixth uh, so at this uh, at this time the sixth house is what's going to be emphasized and highlighted now at this time I mean I have this position natally I mean this could be a greater propensity for getting some kind of uh, like, like perhaps some kind of nerve damage or like shock I mean I have extensive nerve damage irrevocable nerve damage to my arms at this time and hands and I have Uranus almost exactly conjunct my six house cusp and it could be a time you need to be really careful if you're doing any kind of a repetitive work or heavy lifting at this time Scorpio uh, because there's a greater propensity for getting uh, some kind of damage that could be nerve related and might feel like shock sensations going on due to heavy lifting in some cases repetitive uh, something overly repetitive I mean I have Uranus actually squaring my mercury and I have uh, the, as I stated the issues with the hands and with the arms and of course as many of you may know mercury uh, governs uh, the hands and the arms so anyway but on a positive note, this could manifest perhaps in doing something Uranus related as far as employment goes. It could be doing something uh, with astrology, astronomy, aerospace, innovation, uh, rocket science in some cases, uh, computers, electronics, and, um, and also too. Uh, be very careful as far as what if you're doing something with wiring as well because as I say I mean the sixth house is about our employment our work what we do and it could be I mean if you're doing something with wiring I and mean, Uranus could be connected with shocking and electricity and the sixth house is the physical I mean could be is connected with the physical health so just be careful about maybe get you know wearing your uh, whatever you got to do as far as your precautions at this time if you're doing work with wiring where, where there's potential to be electrocuted um, also too um, another way uh, this may manifest is that you might find yourself doing um, some kind of humanitarian service um, it, it could be as far as um, 
it could be humanitarian service or it could be doing uh, performing some astrological service for somebody something with computers it might not all necessarily be I mean as I've talked about before you it might be something as far as employment goes but it could also be where it could manifest in doing something Uranus like as a service for others you might see more bizarre behavior increased bizarre behavior in pets or maybe even an aunt or an uncle at this time and given that this is Aries energy blended a lot of this could be done with a lot of assertive and aggressive energy as well hold on a moment people sorry about that I'm back anyway well next thing up Uranus will be in Taurus as far as March goes from the 6th until the 31st so the seventh house is what will be emphasized and highlighted now at this time um, this could be, I mean, in some cases, this could be about Taurus friendships. It could be Taurus sun, moon, or ascendant people, or simply ones that embody Taurus-like characteristics. Uh, might be more prominent in your relationships, uh, maybe helping you deal with open adversaries. It could be uh, legal issues in some cases. It could be partnership situations. You might also see that uh, you might be seeing... Uh, some unusual obstinate and stubborn behavior from seventh house people such as a grandmother such as a significant other a marriage partner it could be um could even be maybe somebody you're in some kind of business partnership with at this time too you might find yourself marrying uh, a foreigner or some uranus uh uh, person at this somebody that might be connected in like a Uranus profession such as an astrologer an astronomer someone in rocket science aerospace astronomy computers electronics and a lot of this of course could be predicated on other aspects I mean if this is making say a sextile or trine to your natal Venus that could be even more auspicious for it. or if it's happening at a time like say you have transit Juno hitting your seventh house at this time or even if you in your natal chart if you have something uh, in your chart where it, it might indicate something some kind of connection maybe with the foreigner um, you know such as like something like maybe uh, or I should say some kind of love with the foreigner such as something like or marriage as far as such as Juno uh, I mean if you have Juno and Aquarius or Venus and Aquarius something something like that as something that might give you know that might give some uh perhaps propensity uh for this so anyway um also too this could be uh, another way this could manifest this could be about uh formulation of new ways to make money and it might be something connected with a business partnership your relationships may be more erratic and sporadic than usual and also too you might be dealing with um kind of Uranus like open adversaries they could be people that are in uh, Uranus type um, you could say Uranus professions such as astrology astronomers aerospace computers electronics innovators uh, it might be a time too where you might find yourself involved in a uh, maybe you might find yourself wanting more freedom and independence and stubbornly wanting this too as far as your relationships go at this time and you might find some kind of partner that might be rather unorthodox or unconventional uh, it could also be where financial fluctuations given that this is Uranus and Taurus energy might affect your legality such as being able to pay some kind of legal bill or what have you and you might also um it might be a time too where you might have some kind of uh, legal settlement that might be very unanticipated unpredictable and depending on whether I mean if it's something monetary now let's say I mean if it makes a good ass uh, sex star or trying to your natal Venus that could be something more positive if it makes an adverse aspect to your natal Venus say or even your second house cusp then it could be something that might be unanticipated that might be uh, negative so anyway next thing up Neptune will be uh, in Pisces still so the fifth house is what will be emphasized and highlighted now um, this could be uh, one way this could manifest is you may be dealing with more uh, deceptive duplicitous behavior from children from from lovers people you're in a romantic situation with guard against deluding yourself in some something of a speculative nature at this time if you're doing any kind of investments 
make sure that you're really seeing the fine print because when you're talking about Neptune energy, it could give that tendency to not always see the fine print and things and make sure you're really scrutinizing and seeing the, the important details in anything uh, of an investment nature at this time. You might find yourself at this time um, where your uh, romantic situations, you might feel like they're dissipating and dissolving uh, at this time. I mean, I have this going, I actually have the transit in my 11th house now, and I'm having friends that are dissipating, like the dissipating, dissolving into thin air, like there is no uh, tomorrow. And uh, some of you, I mean, may wonder, well, I mean, sounds like what, what is the difference in between like Neptune and Pluto as far as its impact on uh, relationships and and then fading, I mean, well, again, well, fading actually is more with Neptune. Neptune is more uh, of a gradual, um, you know, as far as uh, as far as dissipation and people maybe leaving and eventually being eradicated uh, from your life, perhaps. It's kind of like the person that, that you stay in contact with that, you know, someone may call you once a day, then all of a sudden it's once uh, once a week, then once every other week until eventually the person seems to just disintegrate. That's more Neptunian energy. When you're talking about Pluto energy, Pluto is more of a complete eradication, I would think. It's more like somebody, it could be the result in some isolated extreme cases of somebody dying, or somebody might just all of a sudden just move away or something after just uh, talking to them recently, or they just abruptly cut off all communications with you or, or connection completely after act, after perhaps being in contact with you in a recent period. So that's kind of, that's how I see the difference as far as Pluto is to Neptune. But going back to Neptune and, and Pisces and the fifth house being emphasized and highlighted, could also be a time too where you might find yourself um, doing something as far as a hobby or, or something for enjoyment that could be Neptune related, such as something with poetry, dancing, the metaphysical, which can include astrology, photography, chemistry, doing something connected with illusions such as magic tricks. And also too, uh, this could also be about a time when you're talking about Neptune energy, this could be often be more about fantasizing about things rather than taking action on this. So as far as personal popularity goes, it could be a time where you're more dreamy that that energy in terms of doing things, maybe to increase that personal popularity as opposed to actually uh, doing something about it. And a lot of this could be accentuated depending on aspects. This makes the points in your nail chart. If it makes, say, uh, say if this makes a, uh, an adverse aspect, say, to your natal Venus, then that might actually increase that propensity uh, for that. And um, anyway, next thing up, um, last but not least, Pluto will still be in Capricorn. So the third house is what will be emphasized and highlight. Now, I know a lot of you don't want me to say the dreaded D word, but you know I'm going to anyway. In some cases, this could manifest an actual literal death of a of a sibling, a cousin, a neighbor, someone you may have known from your early education. Uh, this could be a time too where you might find that your communications may be somewhat, uh, may, might be destroyed at this time. But remember that Pluto is also about rebirth and regeneration. It could be a period where you may seem like you're losing some of your contacts, people you communicated with consistently, but doesn't mean they can't come back at a later time or be supplanted. Uh, with other people that you can be talking with. Now, some cases too, this could be like some kind of voice transformation, dealing with vengeful siblings. You might find yourself talking more about Pluto related things, uh, more so than usual, such as things that matters with insurance or the occult, supernatural astrology can be in there, recycling uh, things of a nuclear nature, talking about nuclear weapons, things that, that could be Pluto related. And you might find yourself digging deep in some cases, uh, investigating maybe neighbors at this time, seeing if they have some kind of criminal record or background. It could also be a period, I mean, you need to guard against uh, overly manipulative behavior with siblings, cousins, and neighbors, and, but you may be experiencing that from them as well. And also being overly obsessive and, and fixated with your thing, and, and just in, in general at this time, in terms of things that you might be uh, thinking about. I mean, remember, third house is 
uh, the rational uh, mind at this time. So you just have to be very uh, careful that overly fixated or compulsive behavior doesn't necessarily uh, affect that. So um, anyway, and also too, another way this can manifest is that this could be something, I mean, the Pluto also is associated with surgery. So it just, I mean, it could be something where something surgical uh, maybe might be done in terms of uh, connected with your uh, communication. Uh, perhaps it might have something to do with speech in some cases. And I would look also at the third house being, since the third house corresponds with Gemini, I would look at the third house being connected with the arms and the hands. So it could, in some cases, it could be uh, something surgical associated with that uh, at that time. So anyway, um, well, anyway, that'll uh, conclude this YouTube astrological segment. Um, for my Scorpio March 2019 horoscope forecast part two of two. Stay tuned next time where I'll be giving you my Sagittarius March 2019 horoscope forecast part one of two. Two things I want to get with you on before I head out. Firstly, the stars may impel but do not compel. And secondly, never isolate any single astrological element, aspect, monetary placement, position, configuration, influence, or what have you, and make an analysis of a person, astrologically speaking, based on this alone, because astrologically speaking, the person is the sum of all their components in their natal chart, and not just one. Until next time, people, stay well.